yeah like it's really funny chatting to directors who don't edit or don't know how to edit um, it's like so how do you put a storyboard together <laughs> In the world of filmmaking, there's no genre more creative or as competitive as that of music videos. So if you are somebody who wants to get involved in music videos, whether that be shooting or directing, how do you start? How do you get your foot in the door? Is it film school or just a ton of passion? My guest today is Harry Scott. Harry has filmed videos for artists large and small, signed and independent. On the show, we discuss Harry's workflow and how he runs a production from start to finish for his artists, as well as how he got his foot in the door and a couple of golden nuggets of wisdom. So if you are somebody who wants to be involved in the world of music videos, this is the video for you. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. And I'm curious because we've worked together on a few things. Uh, firstly, back at Red Scope uh, is where I met you and brought on to help us with a project there. And then later on, uh, you pretty much poached me out of uh, my COVID slumber of not having any work at all into working at Two Palms where we worked together for a fair bit of time. And so we've been on a few projects together now, but I know that you've done a lot of film work and done a lot of um, visual stuff and things all over the place. And I kind of want to know, so I guess in, in a word, like what would your like elevator pitch on yourself be? Who are you? Oh, Who's Harry Scott? I hate I hate these questions. I know. Um, who am I? Um, I guess like I'm a video director and an editor. Um, but like every time I every time I say though that title, I always have like mad imposter syndrome, um, which will probably. But be, you are that person though. You are. Yeah, you are it, it'll probably be the theme of this interview. But yeah, more or less, it's like yeah, I guess video director and editor. Um, I do a bit of shooting as well. I do a bit of producing. Um, but yeah, for the most part, that's kind of where I, where I want, who I want to be, and where I want to be going. I guess this is that that old filmmaker question of like, when did you first pick up a camera? Like, what was like, how did you get to doing editing? Because I know that's probably where you started, right? Yes. And then how did that lead you to that? Was it just? I mean, there's obviously a natural progression between like looking at footage to then shooting footage. But like, how did you even get started in the world of like film? Oh, yeah, it's actually, it's a great, I think it's a great story. Um, but, you know, as a director, i got to have a good story, right? Um, so it was funny because I was really into photography growing up. Um, like, I think I just got a camera and I started, I had like a first photography class and I was like, yeah, this is fun. Like, I really like doing this. Um, I was kind of a very visual kid in that sense. So then I was doing a bunch of writing, do a bunch of like all that kind of skill set and then got into photography and then I kind of chatted to my older brother who was doing like media arts and stuff at yep. uni and I chatted to him and I was like, well, you know, I like photography, but I kind of um, also like the storytelling of like writing. And my brother was like, well, why don't you just like make videos? Like it's both. It's, it's like photography and storytelling and it's, you know, you can talk out of your ass like you do when you write <laughs> and you can make good, good, good photos. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it kind of clicked and I was like, oh yeah, like fuck yeah like isn't isn't filmmaking like the art of storytelling and like in a visual medium which is kind of it was like that like formative years of like writing all these years and then like photography as well and then it kind of clashed and i was like it was all like lanes came into the highway kind of thing yeah it was like that eureka yeah. moment right i re i realized it's like oh well i've been doing doing bit of bit of writing bit of photography why not just combine them and make films and then i kind of started i it that, so like that's when I knew I wanted to make films and like videos and that kind of stuff. But then where what I wanted to do in filmmaking that was a roller coaster because okay, I gotcha. originally wanted to be like a cinematographer. You know, I like making a film look good and making a video look good, but I don't know if that's kind of where my heart is at. And then I was like, okay, maybe I can do like producing. And then I was like, ah, I feel so like just out there tasting every yeah, of it. yeah, yeah. It was like producing maybe, and then I was like, no, nah, I need like still need that creative aspect. And then I was like screenwriting, and I was like, okay, I like screenwriting because like that whole writing thing. And then I kind of got to a point where I was like, okay, well, I've been editing a lot, so I kind of I I'm good at editing. Well, if I want to edit more. Why don't I just like shoot and direct my own stuff and then I can edit that and then I can sell that and be like, hey guys, I'm an editor, can you hire me? So then I started like producing and directing my own like music videos for like friends. Your one man band kind of thing? Yeah, and I, I, I started yeah. doing it just to edit really. And then <laughs> it started becoming a thing where I was like, okay, well now I'm actually kind of like directing as a thing and I'm editing, which is like 
yeah so editing is kind of like my bread and butter and like where i feel most comfortable but then it's like i still have that that directing knack that just kind of comes from that like yeah. storytelling and that like i can the, imagine that would also inform a lot of the editing being able to sort of put yourself in the shoes of like either if it's something that you're directing definitely but especially if you're working on something that somebody else has directed and it comes down the line to you as the editor yeah um, it's a great skill to have I can imagine. yeah i think um i think directing and editing should really come hand in hand at least like an editing skill set or an editing background or like kind of an understanding of editing where like much like how cinematography and color is like hand in hand yeah. is kind of how i see it like it's really funny chatting to directors who don't edit or don't know how to edit um, it's like <laughs> so how do you put a storyboard together <laughs> Yeah, i don't know okay. but um yeah that's kind of that's the how i got into it so i hope that's a succinct answer for an elevator pitch we went up quite a few stories yeah but no yeah 100 that, that, that's great what was the way that you got yourself in the industry was this by putting together like a portfolio did you have a website showreel kind of thing how did you get yourself in the door and what was the first door for you um what was it well, promo stuff and shooting events and festivals and music videos and all that jazz. Um, so I had like a pretty, and like doing tour videos. So I had like a pretty good understanding of like editing and shooting and kind of like directing a bit. And I had a good friend who was kind of like, not a mentor, but every time we caught up, he'd give me like really good, like little nuggets of wisdom. Nice. Um, and he was, he was very talented. He's very far ahead in the, in the creative world. Um, and then, well, believe it or not, going to Singapore actually kind of helped um, legitimize a lot of my work. I got some really, yeah. I got a bit of commercial work over there, um, kind of put myself down more as a director over there, which is good. And then, yeah, I think I just, I came back to Sydney, like, end of 2020. So, like, just kind of when COVID had started dying down, just before I had picked up again. Yeah. And I had just put it, I just chucked it all on my website. Um, I was... But I think in saying all that, like I was freelancing as well before I went to Singapore. So yeah. through freelancing, I got a lot of connections through editing, like freelance editing. Um, and I got a lot of connections there. I was chatting to a lot of companies and like looking at how different agencies and production companies worked. So when I did kind of go in that environment in Singapore and the company I was previously working at with you, I kind of knew how a lot of those, a lot of those systems worked. Yeah. So it was yourself into the world. Of yeah, I'd kind of also I'd seen it from a periphery and then kind of jumped into it when I went full time. When we were working together, you were like going home after work and editing, or even coming up with like treatments and all kinds of stuff. It's like those after hours kinds of things. But what was sort of the way that you went from being just an editor to like being the guy that like a band like Cosmos did that, which is quite a an up there um, Australian band? How did you become their guy? uh i'm very very grateful that i'm that i've been working with them lately um they're very they're very chilled guys to work with and like actually um uh, very collaborative and they're open to my ideas and i'm open to theirs um but it came from uh i think start of 2021 yeah start of 2021 um i just had a couple of mates who had some tracks like just couple of like songs they made in their bedroom and um, I had a few ideas that I wanted to shoot and I just said to them I was like hey like I want to do a music video for you guys um, the song like hasn't even come out I don't even know if they'll put it out but um, I had like all these ideas I wanted to play with like some I had a VFX guy who we were working on some VFX effects yeah, nice. um, and I was like okay cool I want to pitch this music video can you do this VFX for it and I was chatting to this DP and we were like yeah let's work on a project together and it was like a budget True director bringing all the pieces together yeah and it was a budget of like six hundred dollars we we had like a day to shoot it um and it was like um we shot it in botany view botany bay on that like you know that stretch at botany bay that like everyone shoots at for like oh, yeah, yeah, car yeah. stuff yeah i was like well everyone shoots there i want to shoot something there like just kind of get it out of my system yep and we just got like a car mount for a day dp had like access to this really nice camera um and then we had like a semblance of an idea and it, it was just like a, a mishmash of little ideas that i had put together yeah. it was like the whole idea was like three really cool performances these cool vfx and like a really cool like vintage bmw and so we we got all that together for like six hundred dollars and then put the edit together with like these really cool data moshing effects 
and then yeah we were just like um i just played video games with the, Co- the cosmos midnight guys and like the guys who were right who i did the video for we were kind of sharing it in like discord and stuff and then they saw it and they're like oh this is cool and then they kind of had a clip coming up and they're just like hey like we like what you did for this can you do that on like a bigger scale that also shows off like the importance of like putting your work out there and making sure that it's like and, and like actually promoting your work not in like a like and subscribe guys kind of way but in like a hey i made this yeah maybe you'd like it and like putting it in front of people because again that, that's sort of like where you get the web to catch the flies yeah exactly exactly so um i just had like a couple ideas that i put together and i always like to say to um a lot of like people when whenever i'm like chatting to people who are kind of just starting out or like what like just trying to not figure it out but like just being like okay cool like i've got this thing coming up how do i approach it or whatever i always like to say to them i'm just like with any kind of creative endeavor it's just like just get it out of get things out of your system like if you have an idea just do the idea even if it's shit it's just out of your system and you know why it works and why it doesn't yeah. and that's the perfect example of it because i had like three ideas i strung them together with like some vfx and like a half-baked song and i literally got it out of my system and now it became like gave me one of yeah it put me in a really good position with you know cosmos midnight so yeah it was one of those things where yeah just i had these just get it out of your system it's kind of the advice i can give yeah. i guess i'd say one of those things is like even if it doesn't it's not release ready it's also like a creative exercise mm, mm. i was talking to um like some musicians and like it's the same thing making beats or just making any kind of project doesn't matter what yeah. the medium is it could be writing a paragraph a day it's that kind of like creative exercise that yeah. muscle that you sort of start working and then that leads you to having like either a bank of things that you can show it or go back to or have as like version ones or even like you said just being able to like yeah. go back and have it lead to the bigger things yeah and proof of concept as well yeah. you know like i can now look at that project and be like if if i want to pitch to another music video and i want to pitch to certain effect i can go hey look at this other one i did like i look at this one i've nailed it i mean i don't <laughs> i'd like to think i nailed it um and i can do it for your clip you know so yeah, again it can kind of expand your portfolio in terms of like the breadth of what you can offer what is your sort of process from receiving the initial ask or the brief how do you then work through somebody's request let's just say it's a music video for the sake of this but someone says hey this is the track this is what the song's about and then you've got to go with it from there here's your budget what's sort of your process and how do you work yeah music it's funny because music videos and i'm pretty i'm sure you probably aware like commercial and content stuff is very different um yeah usually you get the track um first thing is just ask the artist if there's any kind of top line ideas or any ideas that they're like okay cool like associated with the track and if they do they'll be like okay cool we want this idea this idea maybe this thing this that the other i'll just write it down go so they kind of give you the elements and then you got to like pull them together well, if, if they have an idea, then they'll give it to me. Otherwise, I've had times when they're like, we have no idea, here's the track, do whatever. Yeah, so after I've gotten the track and their kind of initial thoughts or thought starters, I'll take it away, listen to it for probably a day or two, um, just rinse and repeat until... Like, sometimes it, it clicks straight away. I'll listen to it and I'm like, cool, I know exactly what I'm going to do. But sometimes it takes a while for it to kind of mm-hmm. come together i think um so like giving yourself the time to really sit with what you have to do and like really start to feel feel it out yeah and and sometimes it'll it'll kind of just click but yeah i, I do need that time to sit on it um and if i if i can't if i if it doesn't click i'll usually just sit on it and maybe even just start kind of like jotting down some initial ideas on like a uh, brain dump um and then i'll, I'll come back to um the artist and we'll usually do like a longer brainstorm so nice. that'll usually be like a one and a half three, to three hours depending on time and what we come up with um and we kind of just start writing everything down and just like it re- like again it could be anything it could be anything mm-hmm. from clothes to storyline to shots like i've had music videos come together with one shot in mind and i've built the whole clip like we've had the concept and then i have like one shot in mind and i'm like cool that is like the shot that i want to see and then i've built everything around that shot what would you say were the words of wisdom that you've received 
that you would want to pass on? Is there something that someone's ever said to you that you're like, oh my God, that stuck with me, that you would then pass on? Uh, yeah. Um, don't be precious. Um, or, uh, uh, and again... A t-shirt out of that, that's great. Uh, that's, like, that's like bumper sticker worthy, that one. Yeah, don't be precious. Don't be precious. Yeah. Um, I think, again, in the same, the same vein, same idea is like, kill your darlings or kill your babies. But I remember the idea comes from when I was... I've never heard that one, by the way. Oh, really? Never heard Kill Your Darlings or Kill Your Babies. So, like, when you're editing and you have, like, a shot that you, like, spent so long on and you're like, oh, I want to, like, use that and, like, there's this great scene and this great... Or you hold on to it for too long. Yeah, but if it doesn't fit okay. in the story, then just kill yeah, your darlings. Kill the darling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, but the idea... I had of... to explain that because it was going to be very awkward to just leave. No, leave. But, but the idea of... <laughs> the idea of um, don't be precious was when i was first a couple of years back uh, a couple of years back i was shooting my first role of super eight mm. um with a friend who was kind of going through the ropes with me and he was like i was like oh like is, we, we were shooting in pretty low light of this fire and i was like is it gonna like and the camera was like it's hard to focus it and i was like oh is the is the focus gonna be weird is like the exposure gonna be fucked all this that the other and he was like dude don't be precious just like it's super eight like just shoot it like you know it's it's your like it's, it's your first bulb. yeah it's your first time first time shooting it like just again get it out of your system um yeah. but yeah he, he said that to me he was like don't be precious like don't overthink it um and that's kind of like stuck with me i was like yeah you know it's not bad it's not wrong it's like sometimes you could be so careful and so precious about like what you're working on or what you're looking at or how you how your idea is but it's like just don't yeah don't be so precious with it like just kind of let it happen hey and thanks for watching this episode of create creative creatives if you enjoyed that i would love to know in the comments below what artist dead or alive you would love to shoot a video for for me personally i'd love to go back and shoot something for david bowie but let me know in the comments below what artist you'd love to film a video for all right this has been create creative creatives and i will see you next tuesday